Hi there, it's Scott Nicholson. Welcome to Board Games with Scott. I'm here with the co-host. Hi, I'm Logan Brechner. And uh, today we're going to talk about Battlestar Galactica. But we're not just going to talk about it, we're going to show it to you. So here we are. And we are here with Brian Mayer, Eric O'Malley, Kevin Tanha, Michelle Zentis, Rob Levy. And we're going to bring to you a game of Battlestar Galactica, filmed in reality show style. With that, let's get to the game. Hi there, it's Scott Nicholson, and welcome to a special episode of Board Games with Scott, where I'm going to take the game Battlestar Galactica and show you the game by having a group of people play the game and talk you through what's going on. Now, this can be a long game. It can take uh, two and a half to four hours to play. Uh, it can be played between three and six people, although it's best with five, and it's based upon the new series that just ended, Battlestar Galactica. You don't have to have watched the show to understand the game, although you're going to appreciate it a lot more if you watch the four-hour miniseries that started the whole series. In the game, you're going to be playing one of the characters from the show. And really, the important part you need to know from the show is that the humans created the set of robots that they have been using to do their duty for a long time. And the robots have decided they don't like it anymore, and they're going to fight back. And so in a massive attack, the robots wipe out almost all of humanity. And just a few people survive, about 50,000 people survive. The Battlestar Galactica was one of several Battlestar spaceships, and it survived. And they've been traveling around trying to find their way back home, and that's what you're doing in the game. Throughout the game, you have to jump from space to space. And jumping in the game, it means you're activating at lights, I mean, uh, faster than light, and you're kicking in these drives, and it jumps you closer to home. And every time you jump, you're going to go a distance, and when you've traveled eight units of distance towards home, you make one more jump, and that's going to end the game. And if humans can do that, they win. Now, this game is a cooperative game between two teams. There's the human team and the Cylon team, but here's the trick. At the start of the game, the Cylons are hidden amongst the humans. They have designed themselves to look like humans, and so at the start of the game, each player is going to get one of these cards that will tell them if they're a human or a Cylon. And what they have to do is keep that information secret. Now, this game is clever in that they give out half of these cards at the beginning of the game and another half halfway through. Because in the series, one thing that happened is someone could just wake up one day and realize they've been a Cylon all along, but they have been programmed to act like a human, and that's going to happen to players in this game. Now, in this episode, I'm not going to be teaching you the game. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on the game experience. You're going to get to see what the players are going through as they play the game, because that's what's really neat about this game. Mechanically, it's not that great of a game. It's not a good spaceship combat game. It's not a good collect and build up your character game. It's a role-playing game about figuring out who the other team is and then dealing with them and dealing with the game situations. So to start out, we're going to hear from our players and find out who's a human and who's a Cylon. I'm going to be playing Chief Galen Tyrell today. I'm human all the way, and we're going to win. Any thoughts on who could be a Cylon? Ooh, I'm thinking Baltar. Baltar's kind of slimy. Yeah. And I am, guys, Baltar. Uh, I'm brilliant, and I am a little concerned about myself. And I am definitely a human, and my goal is to make sure that everybody knows that I'm a human. I'm going to be... Sharon Valerie, Boomer. I am a human. Very good. Yeah, any thoughts on who could be a Cylon already? I'm thinking Rob. He's a Canadian. You know, he looks a little suspicious. Uh, I'm Rob. I'm down here from Canada. And today I'm playing uh, Lee Apollo Adama. Uh, he's a Viper pilot. He's the, the CAG of the ship. He's in charge of the other fighter pilots. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a human. Be sure I'm a human. I hope I stay a human. Uh, Lee's really important to the ship, and uh, yeah, I am not a Cylon. Uh, who, any uh, thoughts on who is a Cylon? Too early to say. Uh, really hoping character playing my father's not a Cylon. <laughs> that, that's always bad. I am playing William Adama, therefore I'm the Admiral, and I get to determine each time we jump, I get to determine which of two cards we use as our destination. So it's a pretty exciting thing. Mostly, I don't usually care whether I win or lose. I just like to do stuff. And Adama always gets to do stuff. So, I'm happy. Are you a human or a Cylon? I am a human. I am always a human. Drives me nuts. This is the main Battlestar Galactica ship. And on a player's turn, typically what they're going to do is they're going to move a space, move anywhere on the ship, and then activate 
what's on that space. The spaces are going to let you do things that you normally do on a spaceship. You can shoot your lasers, you can jump into little vipers, you can launch some vipers, you can throw someone in the brig, you can fire the uh, FTL drives to try and jump out a little bit early, you can get some cards. These two spaces over here are generally spaces you don't want to be. You may be sent to sickbay or sent to the brig. If you're in the brig, then really all you're going to do each turn is try and get a challenge going to get yourself out of the brig. And typically you're going to need support from other players to get out of the brig. This ship up here represents Colonial One. There are three spaces up there. The person who's playing the president is probably going to stay up here most of the game and move between these different spaces. Uh, these spaces give that president more choices. They also let someone call a vote to vote someone else president. So if people don't like what the president's doing, they can send someone up to Colonial One and start a new election. This area represents the Cylon Resurrection ship. Uh, when a player reveals themselves as a Cylon, they will disappear and boop, appear up here. And when that happens, they will then be able to do really annoying things to the humans, but will no longer interact directly. Instead, they'll be playing cards and causing trouble. These four dials represent the most critical resources on the ship. Fuel, food, morale, and population. During the game, the ship will lose these things, and they will drop further and further, and they'll drop into the red zone, which means things are getting bad. If any one of these wheels ends up at zero, then the humans lose the game immediately, and the Cylons win. This is typically the way the game will end, actually, is they'll run out of one of these dials, and the Cylons will win, and the humans will be sad. In the game, there are five types of cards that people will be able to get. They'll choose these cards based upon their characters. At the bottom of a character sheet, it shows you here what kinds of cards you're able to draw. So Leah Donna, for example, is able to draw one tactics, two piloting, and then two either leadership or politics cards. He's a very uh, uh, flexible character. Adama, on the other hand, only gets leadership and tactics cards. At the start of your turn, you're going to get to draw five cards equal to the cards that it shows at the bottom of your character sheet. The main flow of the game is that players take a turn to draw cards and then move on the board somewhere and take an action. After they've taken an action, they're then going to draw a crisis card, and this is the meat of the game. The crisis cards represent either challenges or attacks. If it's an attack, you dump more plastic spaceships around the board and deal with them. Uh, if it is a challenge, it's going to be some sort of problem that has come up that the players have to deal with. The players will negotiate this challenge by playing cards secretly. The cards are five different colors and they have different numbers, and the challenge is going to be a number of points you have to beat by getting rid of your cards. So you go around the table and each player may choose to put in cards if they wish and announces how many they're putting in, and you add two cards in from an external deck and then shuffle it all up. They're going to face this challenge now. It has a difficulty of 13 and it shows yellow and green. That means they have to play 13 points of cards that are yellow and green. And you're going to subtract off any of the numbers on cards that are not yellow and green. And hopefully you'll still have a balance of 13. After you get through a challenge, you'll look at these symbols on the bottom of the cards if they exist. This symbol lets you move the spaceships around the board and attack. This symbol helps you to jump closer to home. It doesn't always appear on the cards, but you want to see that jump symbol as frequently as possible. So let's look at the resolution of this challenge. How we do it in, in my group, just to keep it easy, is we put good in one column and bad in another column. So, and that just makes it easier to add. Ooh. Okay. We have 7, 9, 10, 11, 14, 4, 5, 4, and six against, which means that we have failed the we check. Have failed. And we did not even plus. make the nine We're plus. We're off the nine plus, so we lose a morale. Everyone's, so you found there was a silent on the fleet and everyone's bummed about it. Now you may wonder why there are two bad cards and lots of good cards. Well, there's a couple possibilities. One is that when they started doing this, they took two cards from a random stack. That random stack had two cards of each color. So the two bad cards could have come from that. Or, perhaps, I pulled purple and one of them that I in is a Cylon and deposited some false cards. I don't draw I don't draw blue or red. No, I don't draw red. It was not me. Pulled purple. I, I didn't the blue add anything to, to the pile. You get an excuse. But I draw both those colors. Okay. Which is why we didn't want you adding any to the pile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you understand the basics, we're going to see a few of the encounters that have gone on in the game and watch the players as they react to the situations and to each other. So I get to shoot at them four times. I'm not very good at dice, so this is going to be a little pain. Oh, see? One is a miss. I had a little beer last night, I'm sorry. 
Only one and twos in this, right? Mm -hmm. Yay! And... Yay! All right. Good. I'm better at that job. We have a water shortage, guys. The president here is going to choose if we lose one food or the president discards two skill cards and I discard three. What would you, you like to Cylons do? You don't need to drink water. You guys care. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this moves this one forward to jump. Yes. And it is going to trigger those. We're going to lose civilian ships, though. Yeah, we got a bunch that are And there's a lot out there, and you discarding cards is getting rid of red cards. That's true. And those maximums are nice. It's just a food. Where are we on food? Some fish eat 8,000 kilograms of food. What could go wrong? That sounds like something Cylons would say. It's early. I'm sorry. I'm going to choose food. The only thing that can overgo back up is food. I'm going to choose food. I know. Although, we're going to lose the food? Man, I'm thirsty. All right. Okay, so we've just jumped. So as the Admiral, I get to take the top two cards off of the destination deck, peer them, and see what kind of trade-off I want to make between resources and distance. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to lose two fuel, but we get to jump or we get to go a distance of two. So this is the jump card that the Admiral chose. The goal is for them to get that up to eight. This is two of the eight, and then after they get eight, they have to do one more jump successfully. Brilliant. Everything's going well. Um, we jumped. Um, we haven't had any bad things happen too much. We're decent on everything. I think I'm doing a wonderful job running things. I have been disposed, and I have some doubts about some people. Um, Pilot is just, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, look, I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's a Cylon. I'm not good at reading people. We're doing, uh, I would say we're doing a little poorly for the first jump. We've gone two spaces to a barren planet, but we have low morale, a couple of three population lost, and I have a feeling that Adama's a Cylon. <laughs> I have my deep suspicions about Rob, but... Hard to tell. Hard to tell what's him being a Cylon and him just being Rob. I, I think uh, Evan and Michelle, uh, um, I think they're not, and if they are, they're doing a fantastic job. So I have no idea who a Cylon is. Uh, it, it's really hard to tell. Nothing bad has happened. We haven't seen any traitorous activity yet. It's going to be interesting what happens with the next cycle. Brian, why don't you tell us about what that Cylon boarding party means? That sounds like a great thing. I like parties. <laughs> All right, right now we have one Cylon on the board of the ship. They got on board of the ship because one of the heavy raiders made their way around to one of the hangar decks. So what's going to happen is every time a heavy raider is activated in the future, apart from the heavy raiders moving on the board, if there are any, the Cylon is going to move one forward. If the Cylon makes it boop, all the way here, we instantly lose. Or like any of the other conditions, we instantly lose. Um, so how do we get rid of it? You have to go to the armory and roll a 7 or an 8, which is not a great roll, but... Luckily, there are a few cards that can bolster your role and help out as well, too. So once you jump, every, all the bad ships go away and things calm down for a little while. Now, later on, this happened. To provide a little context, there's a deck, and you always add two mystery cards from the deck to each challenge. And that deck starts with two of each color card. This allows the Cylons to be able to sneak some things in without being noticed right away, because you never know if it was a Cylon or if it was the deck that put in a bad card. Oh, there's one good. <laughs> there's another good. Bad? Blue. Two. Bad. I should have played that. I think good. that made it. Oh, a bad one. Uh oh. Oh, you guys are. Oh, man. Two green. There, All right. Wait, there, wait, there was a green one that poisoned it last time, so someone's throwing a green card. So or. Make it bad. Blue. No, there was a green one last time, and there's two green ones now. It's green. But if the Destiny deck is seated with two each, green last turn, green this time. That's three greens. 
Solid. You are not talking about. Tell you what, we'll take the, the morale hit. But you're not talking about this. Aren't in politics. First of all, well, guys, you know who it wasn't. I don't draw green. And I don't care. You don't care. I don't draw green. Party ever. You draw green, and you draw green. And you draw green. Could have been a blue. Yeah. Blue. But yeah. if it was in a fact, green, didn't you just take a special yeah. action yeah. to take a blue? Okay. We, we just we know this is gonna jump us it one step green. forward. Seriously. And um, you're not talking about it. You're not talking what about it. Okay. You can you can put the blame. There's uh, no, no there's there's nothing. Yes. We're good. You can put the blame wherever you want, but no. No, it doesn't. You no, just chose that so fast without even like thinking about no, it. No, you know, I mean, no, it told us something. <laughs> it's not working. So it's not was a green that poisoned it. You were going to the brig. Before and then Could we just put all three of them in the brig and just play it safe? Sure. Yeah. I support I that. I think that actually happened two. where like all the everybody's in the brig. Yeah, think, think. It doesn't end well. It's no. one of these two. I don't draw green. Okay. Oh. Okay. I am so frustrated they won't listen to me. Last time we did a skill check, one green card poisoned the pot. This time, two green cards poison the pot. I don't draw green. Michelle draws green, and Evan draws green. I didn't do it. It's not me. I don't know why they won't listen to me. Probably because I'm an idiot. I didn't look around. I didn't see who had cards and who didn't. That's my fault. But a stupid little error. They're still ignoring the greater picture. I don't know what to do. They're probably gonna put me in the brig. Probably gonna lose. But I'm actually really a human, just a stupid one. They continued on their way, uh, taking some casualties along the way, having some problems here and there. Finally, they were able to jump another time, which took them to four units of distance, which got them to the halfway point, but they weren't in very good shape. So, the mighty adventurers have made it halfway through their travels back to their home. So far, we, uh, if I'm looking at what's going on, the fuel is in the red zone, they've only got four units of fuel left. The food is in the red zone, they've only got four units of food left. Morale is bad, only five units of morale left. Population is okay, it's, it's not, not that happy people. But three out of the four dials are in the red zone, which means it's bad. How do you all think it's going? Which is bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well now it's going to get worse, because what's going to happen is now we're going to be dealing out the remainder of the loyalty cards, which means that any okay, Cylon cards card. that we're waiting in the wings are now going to be dealt out to the players. So one of these folks or two of these folks oh, and Eric will most right. likely be coming with Cylons. She's got the reverse. I don't think we're going to make it. It doesn't look good. We're, um, we got no fuel. We got no food. We got no morale. We got a lot of people that we need to feel uh, food and keep happy. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, we just made it to the halfway point. We're doomed. I just abandoned all hope you who went to here. Bad shape all around. But we just jumped out of there. There's no ships around. We'll see what happens. So I'm hoping. I'm feeling that uh, feeling the Admiral is a, is a Cylon. He's sending us to these little out of the world planets that only give us one distance. We can't survive this many jumps. We're, we're in bad shape. Uh, that round went bad. I didn't have anything to shoot. Again, I almost got to shoot. We lost lots of stuff. We're almost out of food. We're almost out of fuel. Our morale's low. We got lots of people. <laughs> That's not going to count for much. Uh, we're hurting. Uh, there's another Cylon in the mix now, and uh, I don't think we're going to make it through. I'm with, I was kind of hoping I'd be a Cylon so I could be on the winning team, but I, I, think, I think humanity's toast. One of the skill checks indicates that we have a Cylon, possibly two. But it's really hard to figure out who it is because most, I mean, everybody's done really helpful things. Well, is it being at the halfway point of the game, are you a Cylon? No. No. No, we just got our second loyalty card. No. Nope. Still not a Cylon. Well, oh. it, it is the second half of the game. Are you a Cylon? Mm -hmm. I am a Cylon. I just found that out in fact. It's kind of surprising. Oh. So my power is to reduce morale. So I'm hoping I get to use that at a key time and win it for us. There you go. So. So you, so you don't want the humans to, to band? I don't want the humans to band at all, but I want to pretend like I'm a human and stick with them. <laughs> and if they put me in the brig, I'll sacrifice myself, get resurrected, okay. and it'll be cool. Yeah. I'm actually very uh, happy with my station now, because before it was kind of like, oh, this is bad. Found out I'm a silent, I'm like, I'm liking it a lot more, you know, just kind of have to not let on. And, you know, I'm going to probably help a little bit on the skill checks, throw some cards in here and there, but 
now I'm going to do a lot more sabotaging than I was. When the time comes to reveal myself, I reveal myself and case closed. The adventure continued for a while. One of the big issues is that Boomer was in the brig, and so they had to figure out how to get her out. Uh, they tried several times and didn't succeed. Uh, Rob became more and more suspicious of uh, Evan and Michelle and decided to make a move. So, here he goes. We're going to the Admiral's quarter. So we're going to throw the Admiral on the break. Come on. Uh, come on. Why? Ooh, I, I, okay, I'm going to have to say, I'm gonna have to good choice. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but I know you found us an icy moon and all, but. No, no, I'm not going to say good choice from with, previous with because you. she's the only person that hasn't gone yet since we've yeah, got new stops cards. It's a crisis right? card from coming up. It's one of the two. What? It could be the other. Oh wait, I have a question. Because this is important to me. Who's next in command? When I the Admiral's brig. Who's next in command? It's got to come over. I, I, think I don't think it is. Is it Lee? Yeah, he yeah, is. I think it it's 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 Yeah. I think it is. That is, that is important. Could be an eatable complex. Right, Kirk. So, you're going to waste your turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? There's no harm that it's a person going to the bridge yeah. for a turn, too. Yeah, no, actually there is, because I won't be drawing cards. Oh, wait, no, I would be drawing cards. You would not be drawing a yeah. crisis card. I wouldn't be drawing a crisis card. card but and then maybe we'll move a little further for a change. If I... <laughs> being, <laughs> okay, let's put it this way. Being in the brig is not that bad for a style. Right. Being in the brig cripples a human. Yeah, I am crippled, cool. thank you. Yeah, I'm just like, you want, you want to put, free boomer. You want to put 40%. I can give a speech about it. You want to put 40% of the fleet. That's not an the assumption. We could have a silo. We could have 100% of the silos in the brig. Not one of us can defend ourselves against being a silo. We could have 100% of the silos. You know what? I have a feeling you're not going to do that. Do whatever you want to do. You're so convinced on the silo. Not convince yourself. Go ahead. 50 50. We just can't get him at the bridge. Throw <laughs> 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 away your cards. <laughs> I know it's all the time. If I'm a silent, go ahead and throw away your cards and I'll be delighted. Would you like to contribute some cards? I have no cards. Here's what the quorum has to say. Uh, you have nothing in your own defense. That's, that's sad. <laughs> Actually, all I can do is, is contribute to those the pro colors are the ones that I draw. All right, thanks. So, Green and purple in our past. Green and, green and purple are the, I mean, are in favor but of putting me in the brig. I'm not going to put any. I don't have green and purple. Cool stuff. Of course, you could put in to prove me. That's he, true. It's, it's more valuable. Just so like, what do we have to be? Seven. 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 Shuffle. No hard feelings. <laughs> it's a very effective Cylon technique to go around putting people in the brig. Mm. Even Destiny wanted wow. to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh. 12. 12 4. Okay. The prophecy says Tolkien. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> no, who no. gets the Destiny deck? Who gets the Nurse? Who gets. Who gets yeah, it that's... Comes to me. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. <laughs> we didn't know that. didn't know it at the time. I didn't realize that the galactic forces went with nepotism. Yeah. All right, we have all these people. And everybody's in the brig except for you. And you. And me. And him. And him. He's, he's a Cylon. I know he's a Cylon. He's the worst acting Free. Cylon in the game. <laughs> we just can't do anything so about him. <laughs> Me. No, he like, can. Hey, check my post. He's drawing. I haven't done anything. He draws anything. the right colors. Okay, here's the thing. What? I can. I don't draw. Well, okay, I draw green every turn. I don't purple. I can throw you in the brig, or I can throw you in the brig. <sighs> right now. Are we accepting our arguments one way or the other. No. I but we have a lot of ships on the board. Oh, so you're gonna go with the pilot just because we have.
So this went on for a while, and no one new was added to the brig, but someone in the brig was very much ready to leave. So you're out, you go somewhere, yeah. you don't do anything else, and then a crisis hits you right away. So I'm trying to figure it's out kind of, what, what possibly useful thing I can do. Get bang on the front. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To do what? You just draw yellow. There's no way you can... Can you bust me out? No, I'm not busting anybody out right now. We don't have enough information. We don't have enough information. I'm content with the status quo that we have right now. I okay. like you two where you are, and I like us. Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We will see. Yeah. I mean, we do. I don't think kill us. And, I, I'm and there it is, the moment of Cylon reveal. She's taking her loyalty card. She's tossing it up on the table. It says, you are a Cylon, and it's, it, if she was not in the brig, it would I'm give her a special ability. Father. But she is. So therefore, all that will happen is she will die, and she will teleport up to the resurrection ship and start to play as a pure Cylon character. So, hi. This is Michelle, playing Adama. I've been a Cylon actually since the beginning, and I really blew it on one skill check. And I was so mad because I should only have put in one card on that one because I cannot believe that nobody caught that I put in two cards, but there was only one good card that I possibly could have put in there. I was so mad when I realized that. I still think it was a stupid thing for Rob to put me in the brig, especially just on kind of a whim, but whatever. So our first Cylon has been revealed. <laughs> Michelle has revealed herself as a Cylon because everyone else mm -hmm. bringed her. They wouldn't let her out. She decided nothing she could do, so she said, well, I'm going to go <laughs> <laughs> and join the Cylon. So what has happened now is her character is placed up on the resurrection ship. She got to draw one of these cards, which is a super duper card, which she'll be able to play a bit later on. And now they have confirmed one of the Cylons in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, what will happen? here. That's what a human would do. Why are you lingering? thinking? <laughs> it just says maybe it does not take you down to five population. Oh, we're told. We are. If he reveals now, we're done. Yeah, I don't want to risk you guys going out of five population. You don't want to risk us going down to five population. It's too low. It's too low. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. <laughs> All right, you know what, guys? Yay! Morale goes down by one. Sweet! <laughs> yes! The open. I showed his face. I was actually. And the other Cylon has been revealed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect time. We've got a ton of ships on the board. We yeah. just got to get them to go back on the jump track. What do you think the humans' chances are? They're pretty, pretty slim. Because I got massive assault and. Evan comes right after me. I drew a card that's a 24, very hard to stop, and everything attacks. So I think uh, along with my fellow Cylon, I think we got this. We're a really good shot. So, even if there's nothing on the board at all, I can put it out there and he can activate it. And there ends our episode of Battlestar Galactica, the reality show. It's not really to be continued. Uh, it was a pretty ugly massacre after that. Michelle brought on a bunch of ships, Evan activated them, and just a few cards later, the humans died. So uh, it was not very pretty. But the game was a neat game, and I hope that you've been able to get what goes on in the game from watching this video. While you don't go off and do confessionals, that's all going on in people's minds. I found the more I've played this game, the more I've liked this game, as the mechanics slip away. The mechanics are not particularly elegant. And so you can't look at this as a great spaceship combat game or as this mechanically tight game, because it's not. It's designed to help tell a story, and you have to go into it with that attitude. If you are not interested in role playing and not interested in telling stories, this is not going to be a game you're enjoying. But if you like the idea of slipping into a role and trying to be a sneaky Cylon or trying to figure out who they are, what can be a great game. It is long. That's one of the problems with it. Uh, the game is a great adaptation of the show, including the pacing, because there are times in the game where everything is very hectic and times where there's a bit of a lull. And so you get this pacing that the game puts forth, where it's crazy, 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 calm down, 
crazy, 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 calm down. And there are some points in those lulls where it, things feel kind of dead. Uh, hopefully what's going on there is more of the interaction between people because you're not so worried about focusing on surviving and you can begin to figure out, well, who is a Cylon? What is it people are doing? What you're going to find here is a social experience. So you have to be interested in engaging with each other and engaging in telling a story. And that's what this game is going to bring about. So good job, Fantasy Flight. It's nice to see this adventure pay off. And hopefully you will have your own adventures with Battlestar Galactica. That's it. Go and see more videos over at BoardGamesWithScott.com. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you all later. Bye! Bye.